Clee, uh, when we last talked to you, you said that uh, you were going to really dedicate yourself this off season to, uh, to learning from your first year and you know redoing your body and, and mentally and everything in terms of coming back strong in your second year. Uh, do you feel like those changes have taken effect? And do you feel like you're in a, a to make a, a forward in your second year? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, I feel like you know for me, I just go back and I always set goals for the off season and set goals for the year and my goal for the year kind of drives me for the offseason and which is to always just focus on winning the Super Bowl so I feel like in order for us to do that you know I have to be I have to be ready to do what is asked of me so for me it's to be a cornerstone in this in this in this uh in this organization uh I'm a guy that plays up and down the defensive line and I had to put on a lot of weight and gained just a lot of knowledge through the offseason just to to be able to do that so you know happy to experience it last year and I feel like I'm ready to go. Hey, Cleve, Tashawn Reeves from The Athletic. Speaking of that, the, the coaching staff has said that they expect you to play obviously both the defensive end and inside. How do you go about focusing on both of those where you're able to be successful in both of those roles? I feel like the biggest thing is just cutting it loose. You know what I mean? Last year, kind of going through that process, learning about it. I feel like too much of me was thinking too much, you know what I mean? Trying to learn everything, but, you know, it's a learning curve. This then the third, regardless of what people got to say. People don't know, you know, what it takes to play or do what was asked of me last year. But aside from that, man, I'm ready to go. You know, anything that's asking me, I feel like I'm ready to do now and do it at a very high level, so. Clee, um, Paul Gunther said that you look like a completely different player right now. Um, what do you think that this did, this difference in you is going to do for you on the field? Um, I feel like it's just going to bring a whole different, you know, aspect to our defense. You know what I mean? Regardless of the fact, I feel like, you know, I have a strong purpose on this team and on this defense. And at the end of the day, you know, talk is talk. I got to go out and do it. So I'm ready to just go out there, show my stuff, show my tricks, just stay in the third and, you know, have an impact for my team. This is Vic from The Athletic. Uh, year two, do you come in trying to have more of a leadership role? Is that something you think about? Or what's, what's your mindset as far as that goes? Um, I feel like I've been a leader since day one walking in, you know, regardless of the fact of how, how prevalent of one I was, man. I'm always just trying to, you know, do something and be the best role model leader I can be for the team. And I feel like I've been doing that since day one, regardless of the fact of whether I was considered the best player on the team or not. You know what I mean? You can always be a leader. And for me, I feel like, you know, obviously it starts with, you know, internally with me in the defensive line. And uh, seeing guys and being able to not only just be a vocal leader, but being someone who can listen to different opinions in the room. Like you take a guy like Malik or Carl Nassib or, you know, me and Max always piggybacking off each other. So that's always big, man. The biggest thing is building camaraderie, especially in times like this, uh, you know, where guys, we kind of limited how much time we can spend with, with each other. So it's just the biggest thing is building camaraderie. And I feel like the leadership comes through that. Hey, Clee, Paul Gutierrez here from ESPN. How different is the vibe from last year to now, being in a new city, being in a new stadium, a new facility, anything that comes with that? Man, it's completely, It's for me, it's kind of bittersweet, man. I was a part of the, the last draft class of the Oakland Raiders, so Oakland always has a, a special place in my heart, you know what I mean? So um, definitely it was tough leaving, but coming to Las Vegas, man, and experiencing this new atmosphere, man, it's been nothing but – but 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 open arms from the people here and definitely I, I can't I, I'm, I'm excited for when you know obviously the things with the pandemic pass over and we can really you know get to interject with the fans and hopefully get out into the community more man but it's been beautiful um it's been a little hot we've been having to go really early for practice but other than that man it's been beautiful Kaylin, in your rookie season what kind of pressure did you feel kind of living up to being a top five draft pick uh, I never look at pressure as something that can break you down. Pressure is a privilege for me, you know what I mean, regardless of the fact. I never listen to what people had to say, even though you know you hear it. You definitely hear it. But for me, you know, nobody knows. Nobody knows what, you know, what I know internally or what we know internally as a team, you know, this and the third. And something that always stick with me is like, regardless of when you hear people like things like haters and things like that, you know, a hater is someone who, who doesn't wake up every day and do what you do. But they got, but they can speak on something that you do every single day. So regardless of the fact, man, I just, I, I just block a lot of that stuff out. It don't really matter, you know what I mean? I know I had a good rookie year, regardless of what anybody had to say about me. Um, so I'm just ready to improve on it and get to a Super Bowl this year. So I'm excited.
Lee, have you had a chance to go over to the stadium, uh, Allegiant Stadium, to get a look at it? Uh, if so, what are your thoughts? And also, unfortunately, you're not playing with any fans this year. Um, yeah. w uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, man, that's tough. You know, obviously, that's going to be different, especially for me, man, especially coming from college then, you know, seeing the love that we got back in the Coliseum last year. Um, it's going to be different, but at the same time, football is football. You know, you go out there, you just got to play for the love of the game. You just play for, you know, block those things out, not listen to that, let that be a distraction. But I'm excited. I haven't been inside the stadium yet. I'm actually trying to get up in there real, real soon. Uh, so I'm going to have to talk to Mark Davis and, and Coach Gruden a little bit. You know, that maybe they can give me a little sneak peek. But, yeah, I'm excited. You talked a lot about lessons that you learned last year. What did you learn about yourself? Uh, I learned just, I learned I was resilient. You know, I feel like uh, last year was tough, you know, coming from college and coming from such a successful program in college and me dealing with the different things that I had to deal with my rookie year, whether it's, you know, not having, not winning every single game, you know, having some learning curves where I'm having to learn different positions, this, that, and the third. And obviously, you know, with mid-season where I had to deal with the, I got real, real sick, lost 20 pounds during the season. So I feel like, you know, for me last year, it was just about, I learned a lot about my mental toughness and different things like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative for my support system, my Lord and Savior, my, my teammates, really, because they're the ones who kept my morale high throughout the whole thing. Have time for one more? The, uh, with Rod Marinelli coming on board, how's that relationship been between you and Oh, man, it's been, it's been great. You know, first off, you know, I thank God for putting, you know, great people in my life and someone just to have the opportunity to learn from someone who's considered like, you know, a legend in the game and not even just that, but he doesn't carry himself that way. He carries himself like this, like he's still, you know, that young coach who's dying to make an impact on the league, man. It's been it's been truly, truly great. And the biggest thing that he's told me is just, you know, regardless of the fact we got to block out all the noise, you got to come in, be a leader, and you just get off and we're going to clean you up. You know, that's the biggest thing, man. I I, I really love his teaching because he he, he he understands and appreciates that football isn't, isn't a scientific thing, you know, at the end of the day. It's a, it's a game that we love to play, and you just got to go out there and play hard and play with a disposition, so I love him, for sure. Looks like we got two more, Vic. Yeah, I want to ask you about one of your rookies. How is uh, Jonathan Abram coming along? <laughs> Uh, if, you, if people consider that fool a rookie, yeah, John been John been doing good. John been acting just a John. Man, he looks healthy. He looks fast. He's obviously he's always been a smart player. Looks confident out there. So I'm just ready for him to you know get get back out there, get back in the, when we get pads on, just get back out there and you know show his stuff, just get back into the swing of things. You know, obviously because it was tough last year with him getting hurt in the first game and then missing the whole season. So I'm excited. He's gonna be he's gonna do really really well. Hey, Cleveland, just wondering, have you been able to talk to Max and ask, you know, how he's doing? Is he doing all right in quarantine, um, staying healthy? Oh, yeah, we talk every day. You know, that's my boy. He's probably my best friend on the team. We talk every day, and he uh, he doing good. He trying, he, you know, he at home playing with the dogs, or he got a little palm tree out there that we uh, he out there slapping on. He ain't got no bags at the house. He ain't got a whole lot of workout gear. So he been doing good. He's just waiting his turn for when they tell him to come back in. Great. Thank you, guys.